Now, um, the, um, the, the beach itself, I said, was 300 yards wide, and um, there was a road coming up here called the Veerville Draw, this road that comes up from the beach. And uh, those of you that have seen Saving Private Ryan, the part played by Tom Hanks, where he got up against the seawall and he picked up a radio and he was trying to shout and radio out that a dog one is not open. This was called dog one, the Veerville Draw. The, the Allied command saw the great strategic value of that road because once you captured the beach, how would you get all your supplies, ammunition, food, so forth, up into France? So they codenamed it Dog One. And the reason Dog One was closed, the Germans had built two eight and a half foot high cement reinforced steel walls, each parallel and six feet thick, blocking the entrance to Dog One from the beach. Now, those of you that have seen uh, The Longest Day, Robert Mitchum playing General Norman D. Coda spent the entire last scenes of the movie trying to blow these walls. And when the walls were blown, all the soldiers ran up the hill and the battle was over. The Longest Day picture was over. This is false. Infantry is not stopped by walls. So General Norman Coda, one of the biggest heroes of D-Day, especially on this beach, was up in Beerville capturing the town when the walls were blown at 5 p.m. by Colonel Robert Ploga, later to become General Ploga, with 10 cases of TNT in front of the front wall. So. Uh, the other thing I want to tell you about the defenses that was horrible, uh, General Erwin Rommel took over the uh, command of the Atlantic Wall about uh, January 44, same time that Eisenhower took command of the Allies. And he walked the beaches. He was in charge of the Atlantic Wall. He went from Norway down to Spain. And he was very dissatisfied because his strategy was to stop every invading soldier in the water, on the beaches. Do not let one soldier reach dry land. So he had his men put in six and a half million new mines on the beaches, and he built four rows of diabolical obstacles. Now on this beach, go green, if you can picture out 600 yards of open sand, the first row of obstacles were called uh, element C or Belgium gates. These were seven feet wide and 10 feet high. They had a 40 foot platform of making them stable. And one next to the other, 300 yards out. For you Americans, three football fields out. And uh, this was to stop assault boats from coming in. It was all barbed wire and mined. Only visible at low tide. 50 yards closer to Veerville was the second row of obstacles. These were called the poles. These were cement or wooden poles cemented into the ground, tilted north towards England, and telemine strapped to the top of it. The third row of obstacles were the ramps. Now those of you that see Saving Private Ryan, I want you to know that those ramps were placed in the wrong direction. The ramps were facing, the wide angle was facing the land. And it was, it was a tree limbs held up by bipods or tripods. This was for the assault boats to go up on the ramp, throw their men out the rear. And they were barbed wire in mind. The last row of obstacles is the most common obstacle that you see in any D-Day movie. It's called the Hedgehogs. And they were 130 yards from this seawall at Veerville. And they were three steel rails welded together, cemented into the ground, and standing five foot high. And this was to stop tanks. 
Um, so all of these were barbed wire in mine and only visible at low tide. So guess what? Low tide on D-Day was gonna be 6.30 a.m. So each hour, the hour of landing, was gonna be 6.30 a.m. So I think I've covered the defenses pretty good. Tomorrow evening, I'm gonna speak about the attack, if they let me. Thank you.